Hello again, so this series is looking at making the Spartan Warrior and turning him into a game model. In this episode we're looking at retopology. So the first thing I've done is I've gone over and I've added a decimate modifier. It was at 2 million faces, which is far more than I was expecting it to go to. So I turned it down to 0.6 on the ratio and I'm left with a million faces. This is just so my graphics card and computer can handle it. You can't really tell the difference. One thing I have done since the last episode as well is I've just added a tiny bit to the helmet just to give it some texture. So I did the decimate modifier before starting recording because it can be a bit laggy otherwise. So I've already done that and it's at 0.6 and it still looks fine. So there's a couple of ways of retopologizing that I'm going to go through. The first one is the very easy way using instant mesh. And the second one I will go through and do a detailed retopology for those that are interested in those techniques. So let's start with instant meshes. Now I've just done a tutorial on that so you'll have to look at the link, I don't want to go through it all again. So once you've followed that tutorial through you can come back to this video and we'll tidy up the mesh that you've got from Instant Mesh. We're looking for a target of about 15,000 faces that we can then reduce and edit. Okay so I'm going to bring my Instant Mesh retopo in, file import obj and here's my remeshed model and it's over the top of my old one and it's done an okay job you can see. Now what I will need to do is go into edit mode Control E, clear sharp. They're all sharp seams as you can see from the blue. So Control E, clear sharp, and that will put them all back to normal. And then if I just hide my high poly, you can see the low poly there, and it's not such a bad job. Now with the Spartan high poly hidden, I want to mirror this mesh. So I'm gonna to go to my auto mirror tool again, which I talked about in the previous episode, and apply a mirror in the x-axis. This time I want it in the positive direction. It's just what I'm more used to is working on this side. So that means my vertices and everything that I'm editing will be on this side. You can do it in the negative if you like working on this side for some reason. And press auto mirror. And the first thing you want to do before going into any retopo is just to tidy up this middle line, making sure there's no overlapping vertices. So around here, it's not worth having these, for example, and this edge loop coming up here. In fact, if I hide the see-through mode as I call it. So to get rid of those, alt click and delete and then dissolve edges. And that will get rid of any issues surrounding that sort of thing. So there's one here as well. Alt click to select the line, dissolve edges. You will end up with end gons around the place, but that's okay. One here as well. So these tiny lines, which we don't want, dissolve edges and just make sure they're tidied up. That looks a bit strange at the moment, but we will tidy all this up later. You can see how the topology is very strange around here. It needs a fair bit of tidying up, really. I'm going to move these vertices out because they might cause a problem when clipping's turned on with the mirror. With circle select, it's left click to select things, middle mouse button to delete things, and right mouse button to come out of that mode. Okay, that's to try and stop any glitches when I'm set up my snapping. So now what we want to do is get ourselves ready for retopology. So I'm going to do two ways of retopology. The first way is just tidying up and quickly sorting out the mesh. This will be very rough and it'll just about be acceptable for animation. So a quick, easy fix. And I'm going to do a more detailed retopology of this character where I go into more suitable and efficient topology, but it does take a lot longer. Okay, so I need to add a modifier to this, another modifier, which is the shrink wrap, and select my target as the high poly. So I'll bring back my high poly and select that. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds, depending on how high poly your mesh is. And you can see it making a bit of a difference. That makes the mesh stick to the high poly mesh. So the low poly sticks to the high poly mesh. And eventually we'll want to apply it right at the very end, but we keep it as it is for now to guide us. Now if I go into edit mode now and select a vertices, let's select one here, and just grab it and pull it out. Now the, verti now the vertices is still out here, but the finished mesh is in here with the modifier, and that's what the shrink wrap does. But the vertices is still out there, so it's not correct. What we need to do is turn snapping on down here, and we snap to faces, so it's gonna snap to the nearest face, which will be the high poly, and the closest in that case, just there. We also have project individual elements onto the surface of other objects. 
The other thing that's worth doing is keep above surface. That should keep your mesh just above the surface of the high poly mesh so it's easy to edit. And lastly, adjust edit cage to modify results. When I click this, you can actually see the cage and that's really handy. And that actually moves those vertices to the modify result as well. So now if I grab this, I can't pull it out anymore, but it is going kind of to the nearest face, which is behind there. Okay, so now we're ready for some retopology. So the first thing I want to do is reduce some of the faces. When you're doing that, there's two things you need to be aware of. You've got to try and keep the silhouette, which is doing very well, but it's quite high poly at the moment. We want to get it down to more like 3,000 to 5,000 faces, going up all the time, that is. And obviously this is 10,000 faces, really, because it's a mirrored object. So we want to keep the silhouette. We want to make it just about suitable for animation. So where there's any bends, so like this forearm, for example, in the elbow, there'll be a bend here. You need topology around the crease. This is actually quite well topologized. We got a bit lucky because there's more topology on the back side than there is the front. So this side will stretch and this side will pinch. Ideally, you have slightly more topology on the back side than the front side. Most people just do so like three loop cuts that around those. And that does a very basic job. So topology around here, for example, isn't as necessary. So let's go in and delete some of this. So if I select my lines, with Alt click, delete, dissolve edges. I can go in and shift select some. So about there, delete, dissolve edges. And you can see I'm slowly reducing the topology. So the, the foot is gonna bend there. So I can get rid of this one. Just gonna do a quick test to see how many I can delete around here. That's what you will have to watch out for when it's retopologized like this. You get really long loops and you don't want to delete too much in one go. So try and select the shorter loop cuts and delete those. So these loops will terminate at the sort of pole ends where there's either three, three connectors or five and above. So you can see this one is one, two, three, and this one is one, two, three. So there's two poles at the end of your edge loop. And what I'm doing is going around and see if I can delete any of those shorter ones that aren't going to mess with the silhouette and and aren't going to cause too much of a problem with the animation. Now this leg around here might animate badly and if you're doing a more detailed retopology you should have an edge loop coming down here for the animation of this leg. So I deleted a really long one there, which you can do. You just gotta be a bit careful that it doesn't destroy your silhouette. Okay, so it's quite a long process, so I am time-lapsing some of it. And you might think, well, why didn't you start off with a lower poly mesh when you brought it in from instant mesh? It's better to go with a high poly mesh to start with and delete it than it is to try and add. It gets quite awkward when you try and add stuff. So here, for example, it probably wouldn't be very good to delete this edge loop or this one because there is a line going along here. And again, ideally you'd have it going all the way around there. Now this is quite an unusual one. And the best thing to do here, I want to delete these two, I think, and have a straight line going down there. So I'm not gonna delete those, I'm gonna do that a bit later. Now I think that's the sort of distance you want ideally. You can go a bit further depending on whether there's sort of topology sticking out like this and whether it affects your silhouette, but that's the sort of size of quads I'm looking for in the end. This process is entirely up to you how long it takes in terms of how low you want to go with the polys and how detailed you want to go, but this is supposed to be just a quick fix. I'll do a detailed topology in the next episode.
So ideally, I don't want to get rid of this one because you can see that it's coming down here in a nice way around the neck, but I don't really need it up here. So at times you might want to get your circle select and deselect these areas. Make sure you haven't got any selected underneath. You'll know that because your cursor will be in the middle of where you want to delete and then press delete. And we have got a triangle there, but we can sort that out later. Now this is something that I could have sorted out in instant mesh if I'd noticed it, but really you want a nice line going down these edges here and the curves must have been going outwards slightly. And that makes it awkward to retopologize. Okay, so this has gone quite far, and you can see it's really struggling to stick to the mesh now. If I delete the high poly mesh, you can see it's all warped all over the place. So we'll certainly have to go back and sort those sort of issues out. You might want to save your work part way through this process because you may go too far. So I'm kind of looking for ones that the pole ends abruptly. Okay, so we're down to around four and a half thousand faces just over, which is not too bad. We might be able to tidy up some of it as we're going along. So what we need to make sure of now is that it's snapping in the right places. So if we look at our low poly, it's not too bad around the arms. So we can get away with a fair bit there. Just got to watch out what's going on there. Where there's sudden changes in shading, it might be worth having a look at. Obviously around here where the, it's mirrored at the moment, but right at the very end we can sort that out and apply our mirror. And around the helmet, just in these areas, seems to be problematic. And there's going to be a few places where there's n-gons rather than quads. So we'll have to go in and sort those out. You can see there is an issue at the top here as well. So you just have to check that silhouette, see whether it's lining up. But the most important areas are the way you're going to have bends. So shoulders, arms, waist, neck, knees ankles and toes. Right, so back in and we're going to sort out the mesh in vertex mode with snapping turned on. Now the first place was the helmet, wasn't it, where it had real problems up here. So select vertices and press full stop on your numpad and you'll get into vertex mode. And we need to start pulling some of this around so it fits our silhouette. So we've got a pole here which we don't want. It should carry on down there but it ends at a pole here because there's no mesh in between here so select 2 and press J to join you don't press F for fill if I press F for fill and then go to face mode you see there's still a face there so actually it's J for join now when I select this line I should be able to delete those without too much problem and now somehow I've got to sort this mesh out so G to grab and we need something going in between here don't we so, let's hide the high poly for a moment and get my knife tool out. 
So click on one vertices and then just drag through creating clicks each time with the left mouse button. And then when you're happy with your line, you press enter to confirm it. And then I just move the vertices into place with grab, trying to line them up with the edge. Okay, but you can see the topology looks horrendous there, but it is working. So we've tidied that bit up and we can probably get rid of this loop here and this one here. And you can see how I tidied that mesh up so it's a bit more suitable now. We've got a big gap here, so I think it's worth pulling these along a bit. Okay, let's have another look. And as you can see, that's how you can go around fixing your mesh. I won't go through the whole figure doing this, but I'm gonna show you just a few more bits of how I fix this mesh. Again, you can go as far and as detailed as you like. Depends how much time you have and how effective you want your model to be. These types of corners are very important. So make sure you've got those. Let's go back to our low poly. And you can see I need to put a knife tool in here. Back to the high poly. Reposition that so it's right on the edge. Back to the low poly. And then I can start thinking where I want to delete edges. So hopefully that will work as a guide if you want to quickly retopologize your mesh. You can go quite far with this technique and you can use the instant mesh as a base. But the idea is that you can retopologize anything very quickly and then go more detailed depending on how much time you have and you can start developing your skills. In the next episode I will be retopologizing fully without using instant mesh and then after that we'll be painting.